so we have to look on the inside of the heart. We got to work with the mind. And, you know, when, when girls come into our home, Brenda, they come broken and hurting. Um, mm. But they feel the very first thing they say is when I walked in, I felt love. And so love wow. is what can bring healing. And that's what you and I know. We've seen together that the love of God can heal the most wounded heart. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello, friends. You know, we talk about it often on this program, the pitfalls and mind traps that want to sabotage our progress on the road to overcoming our greatest challenges. This is why it's good to have mentors in our lives, the cheerleaders that God provides to help us believe when our faith is scarce, when our arms are heavy and our tears are many. Rosalinda Rivera describes herself as a Latina on fire for Jesus. Her love for people, comedy, and her entrepreneurial spirit has taken her around the world to help tens of thousands of young people struggling with addiction, abuse, domestic violence, and sex trafficking. She really is a weapon in the hand of God against the powers of darkness that are threatening so many men and women in this age. It's really my honor to lock arms and purpose with you, Rosalinda, and thank you so much for being on the show today. We welcome you. Oh, Brenda, I am so happy to be here with you. I'm excited about bringing hope in sometimes a hopeless situation, so I look forward to our time together. Well, you know, you and I share uh, a lot in common. I have a feeling, we've never met in person, but I just have a feeling we're kind of soul sisters, very connected in spirit and in purpose. Uh, so much of what I've read about you and your passion, I share the same passion for people uh, that are, you know, living a marginalized and broken life. That was my own testimony and how God pulled me out of wreckage, you know, and restored me. But it's a process of healing and I'd love for you to just tell us what it was. Give us some of your background and tell us why God moved your heart in this area of uh, helping people to overcome addiction and abuse and, and uh, these things that just bind them so deeply. Thank you, Brenda. You know, my background is, is just a little different than most people, but I always start with my dad's stories. So I had a father, um, actually my whole family came from Puerto Rico and they came here to uh, New York City to really looking for the American dream. They were looking for hope. And by the time my dad was 12 years old, he found himself being bullied. He was fighting his way in out of school every day. And by 12 years old, he joins a gang called the Roman Lords. And now, Brenda, you got to understand, um, this is not the dream my family was looking for. By 14 years old, he became a heroin addict, and it just really took my, my family's life down a spiral they could have never, never expected. And so, but the great news was I had a praying grandmother, and I know there's some praying grandmothers out there today listening to this. A man named David Wilkerson in the early 60s went to the streets of New York and began preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And one of those people that heard the gospel was my grandmother. She took that home. She took it home with her and um, would pray over my dad. You know, here he is. Now he has grown into what's called the warlord of the Roman lords. So this is one of the largest gangs in New York City. And my grandmother, she just started praying over him and bringing that hope home. Wow. So essentially through that ministry and your grandmother taking that message home, your father's life was completely turned around. Um, and, you know, I really that speaks to how the enemy targets us, because oftentimes I think he sees that purpose and that call, that anointing that's upon us for purpose, for, for God's kingdom. And he wants to wrap us in his lies where he assaults our identity. Uh, wouldn't you say that's the case? And can you speak to that? Yeah, you know, and not only that, when the enemy can't get to even your parents, you know, I'm a pastor's kid now because the story continued. Mm, yeah. You know, he'll go after the next best thing. <laughs> sometimes he'll target our children. And so, you know, mm -hmm. and just know sometimes yeah. if you if you feel that the enemy's been coming against you, it's because you have a great purpose in your life. And that was a case mm. in my dad's life. You know, God had a destiny, a purpose for him. You know, he comes out of this life of addiction, 
goes to Bible college, a lady named Catherine Kuhlman uh, stroked out a check and sent him and Nikki Cruz to Bible college. And so they meet in California and he meets my mother there. They become missionaries. They go around the world. And really that's where our ministry and where my calling got connected in 71. Here comes a gangster. My mother from Mexico didn't speak any English. And um, they come to Richmond, Virginia, the heart of the Confederacy. And here are these gangbusters just disrupting um, this uh, racial divide. And God sends these two people in to create a bridge that still to this day has been just changing lives. So they start bringing people, Brenda, right off the streets into our home. As a young girl, I gave up my bed. I thought it was cool. I had no idea. You know, like Goldilocks, who was sitting in her seat, who was eating her porridge, who was coming (laughs) into my house. Wow. Uh, but it was men and women, girls in prostitution, uh, trafficking, addiction. And so the house got full and I grew up watching mm. brokenness turn into hope and healing. I love that. And, you know, I have to tell you, uh, even though, you know, I want to talk about your story and, and all that's behind it. My mother did the same thing, and I grew up in Nevada, where my mother was reaching out to the prostitutes and different ones and bringing them into our home. And I mean, she would give her coats to the homeless, and and she didn't just give her her old coats; she would give her best coat. And right. you know, I really watched, just like you're saying, I watched the love of Jesus modeled for me. And you know, none of us are perfect, but but love. His love is perfect and can work and flow through us. And I just think, you know, that oftentimes we forget that some of these issues of identity and wounding are, you know, they're tied to soul things, soul issues, and maybe deep traumas from our past or present that we don't always know how to unpack. And so uh, in my experience, it's really been a process Uh, that I've witnessed of healing and not that kind of instant success or instant overnight type of thing that we, we love instant food, you know? So I'd love for you to speak to the process of healing and, and what that involves some of the, the difficulties. Yeah. It's really good for us to talk about the reality of overcoming addiction, overcoming trauma. You know, we do want that experience where you've come to the altar and in one moment, you know, they're healed. And sometimes as family members, we can be really frustrated or as individuals and go, you know, I'm hearing it's supposed to be an instant healing, but why isn't that happening for me? And so there's no place uh, better than I've been able to learn about this experience and see it than in our own ministry. So my parents started, eventually got out of our house and we opened up the Mercy House for Women and the, the Home for Men. And it's a year long program that we have. But I always ask a question. Uh, if when they walk in day one and they're off of drugs, then why do they need to be there a year? And that is because the process of healing takes time. It's a lifelong learning. You know, a lot of time it's the character. It's whatever's happening in the home. You know, maybe you're listening today. You have a son or daughter that's been involved in these things and you just feel hopeless or you feel like, well, I prayed for them two years ago, but they fell back. And so the key and what I encourage people to know is, you know, God is the source. You know, I can walk you 12 steps forward and 12 steps back. But if you're not plugged into Jesus, if you're not plugged into hope and receiving love on a daily basis, it's easy to fall back. You know, we talk about the big things like addiction of drugs and prostitution, but there's there's no um, comparison sometimes. But it, it it's true. We have Weight Watchers all over the world. It's another form of addiction. You know, it's a legal form, but it kills as many people. So we have to look on the inside of the heart. We got to work with the mind. And, you know, when, when girls come into our home, Brenda, they come broken and hurting, uh, Mm. but they feel the very first thing they say is when I walked in, I felt love. And so love is what can bring healing. And that's what you and I know. We've seen together that the love of God can heal the most wounded heart, but sometimes it takes time. Yeah. And it's it's not just people who have not grown up in church. I mean, this is affecting many people. Addiction, uh, many forms of addiction are affecting people inside the church. Um, what are your 
what are your concerns and responses to that? And how do we slow down long enough to really just be able to acknowledge and say, okay, this is where we are and here's where we need to go? You know, if we look at the past year, how many people died from an overdose? It is, it's pandemic in itself. It's, it's a major issue. Unfortunately, Brenda, a lot of churches, Christian programs, they don't want to talk about these topics, but these are the topics that are tearing apart relationships, tearing apart marriages, uh, mothers that can't sleep at night because you don't know what's going on in your son and daughter's lives. I want to encourage pastors to talk about this. The minute you open this topic, the minute you say, you know, we're going to pray for families. Um, if, if you're having an issue, come talk to me as a pastor. Watch your phone get flooded. But because we put this pressure on, then every family has to be perfect. You know, that there's not going to be, you know, if I'm saved, I can't have a problem in my marriage because if people yeah. find out, you know. And so mm. I think one of the ways um, we got to get out there the old way. And, you know, I hate to say knock on doors, but back in the 80s, right, we'd be knocking on doors <laughs> I do. for people. I remember that. <laughs> um, but we got to get back yeah. to the grassroots of mm. evangelism and letting people know there is hope. And you watch lies, lies will get transformed. You know, when I go out, I share yeah. and I speak, but it takes more than one. It takes all of us together, yeah. letting people know there's a way that people can change. I think what you're pointing to is really the heart of compassion. And so, you know, perhaps the Lord is wanting our attention right now. And he's saying, listen, my people, there are people who are hurting, who are bound and oppressed. And if you love me, then love my sheep. And I, I, this is what I see you doing is reaching out and being the boots on the ground and doing what really matters where it matters. And so I love that you're pointing to um, the message of hope and, and asking leaders and asking pastors to begin to open up those conversations and bring it to the platform. Do you think they're afraid of, of what they will attract? Are they afraid of, of dealing with something that they, they feel they're in over their head? You know, I, I'm going to agree with you on one thing is I do think a lot of times if pastors make the open call to people that are in these types of addictions, they think, I don't want them to come into my church. You know, what What I love are the churches that are understanding that church is outside the four walls. In fact, that's how our church started. Right. Uh, my dad came into Richmond, Virginia, and he thought, oh, my gosh, this place is so holy. Even the dogwoods grow in the shape of a cross. They have no problems here. <laughs> But little by little, he would preach the gospel on the streets and he would see the need. And that's how our church birthed. There was so many people in need that the church ended up birthing. And of course, today it's a great community church. But there is we have a women's home and a men's home that attends it. And these people have the gifts, the talents, the commitment um, that a lot of times yeah. your, your average person that's attended church all their life, you know, doesn't even serve. But when something changes inside of them, when they understand that mm -hmm. they are a new creation in Christ, they become some of the best and most involved people in our church. And, and Brenda, I've seen 25,000 people come through the doors of new life. And, uh, you know, through our program there, you know, I, I think of one of the girls, Brenda, that came to us. Uh, her name was April and she just became a pastor. But years ago, she walked in the door and the most horrific story, one of them I've ever heard, she was left in a, basically an orphanage, but one person, her grandfather was allowed to pick her up. And of course he raped her terribly, things that I can mm. say on the air. And I've, I've been a part of this yeah. my whole life and never heard mm. a story like this, but yet she would walk around the home with so much joy. And one day she baffled me as a leader and I said, April, I mean, I'm so happy that you found healing, but I can't even understand how you can have so much joy knowing your testimony. Mm -hmm. And she said, Rosa, she said, I am a new creation in Christ and God has wiped away those, you know, those past thoughts. So yes, there is those instant moments, but it was a year of being with her and walking her through that. Now this is 10 years ago, Yeah, serving the Lord. Uh, she continues in her faith. And she continues to reach out to other people. I mean, there's so many stories like that. 
And uh, most of all, I just want to encourage those that are listening. Don't give up. I don't care if your son or daughter has yes. gone to five or six rehabs. Don't give up. My grandma didn't get up, give up. And um, God is calling you to be faithful and continue to pray for your family. Amen. And what you spoke to just now really is important to know that when you've really hit bottom, when you have experienced the worst of the worst, there is a joy that is unspeakable. It's unexplainable. When Jesus comes and he heals that, when he delivers you from that thing and you realize that others don't know this person of Christ and it, it ignites you in a way that you have to share. Um, you know, one of the quotes that I love so much from Harriet Tubman, she said, I've rescued a thousand slaves and I would rescue a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. And man, does that hit home because there's a whole world out there of people who do not realize they are enslaved to something. And, uh, you know, I'm always excited to hear about a testimony. Now you have, uh, you said you have two homes, correct? One for men and one for women. And how many people can you house uh, in a year? So we can house a hundred people at one time. Wow. Uh, we have the Mercy Ho House for women, and then we have a uh, new life for adults and youth. And so we, and, and beyond that, Brenda, it's funny growing up in ministry, uh, it was a struggle, right? And so I remember telling my dad one day that I wanted to go into business. And so I said, because this is just tough business, you know, this is tough feeding all these people. And you know, we do it for totally for nothing. And I said, you know, the Lord's got to give us some kind of concept. So I ended up starting a company. I'm out there doing this. And I know this is a little side, but it comes back in. Um, realizing I, I was successful in business. I actually opened a little retail store when I was 17. By 21, I owned three retail stores. What I learned is I didn't want to do that for life. But God showed me a model to bring back to our ministry and today we actually have a 12 acre commercial park where our guys and girls work and they get vocational training. I don't own it. It's totally the ministry. It helps sustain them. But every single person that comes to our program actually is hired. So they can either hire back with us or we can um, get them a job. So it's really this community that we've created. Um, yesterday, we just got our license for our outpatient intensive care clinic. And so now if you cannot come and stay a year, you can come three days a week, get Christian counseling. And this is not just for addiction. You know, I am a pro Christian counseling right. person. You know, we need somebody yeah. to walk us through these processes, you know, so we see that. But uh, in one of the events I attended with our head psychologist, she took me down there and I'm not a psychologist, right? I'm just somebody on fire for the Lord. And there is a thousand people in the mental health event. And at the end of this very long and arduous uh, conversations they had, they said one thing. They said, but the reality is the people are looking for hope. Well, I turned around and slapped her high five. And I said, you know, that's why we work because we have Jesus, we have addiction yeah. counseling, but the hope is what you can find. And see, God can break the chains. God can set you free. You know, we, you said it. We go to so many other things when we're looking for hope, when the reality is that Christ is the only one that can deliver us, set us free, and give us a purpose that we're looking for. Amen. Can you tell us a story or, or share a success story of someone who just really felt hopeless but has gone through your program and their life has been changed? I can. So I was sharing with April, man, there's so many, but one particular young lady, um, and she, what a story. She was 14 years old, really living in the almost mountain region, going to a little private school. Mm. And she was having some domestic problems at home. But at 14, she meets a boyfriend and she decides this is my ticket out and follows her boyfriend right. from the hills of Virginia. She actually goes down to Philadelphia. And the very first night she didn't know, what she didn't know was the father was the biggest pimp in the whole area. Hands her a box oh. of whites and she's raped by three men at gunpoint. And this takes mm. her down this journey, Brenda, that is so incredible, oh. addicted to heroin. I mean, 
I mean, I have a before and after picture that would blow you away with just, uh, you can see in her joints and the everywhere you can poke a needle. She becomes a heroin addict for about 11 years and she's trapped in this lifestyle that's Jesus. just devastating. And all of a sudden uh, she ends up getting arrested because now she's in trafficking, she's prostitution, you know, it's the whole thing and then the addiction. But in that jail, somebody told her about the Mercy House and, you know, her mother had been praying for many, many, wow. many years. She comes into the doors of the Mercy House and little by little, I'm not going to tell you overnight, because nobody walks in the Mercy House and goes, yay, I'm in here. This is where I wanted to be. Right. You know, um, right. <laughs> she comes in and little by little, through ministry and counseling, she surrenders her heart to her. She surrenders her heart to the Lord and her life mm. is transformed. Well, she gets married. This is she stays on. She ends up giving her life for about three more years to reaching other young people married. She's a mother. They're business owners. They bought a beautiful house. I, I get to talk to her every once in a while, see her on Facebook. And it is a reminder of the power of transformation that we can have in Christ Jesus. Mm. It's my encouragement, you mm. know, it's my encouragement to keep yes. on going. Yes, and not stop and not stop believing if you're a parent praying for one of those children that's bound. Uh, that's incredible. And, and the fact that you are also giving such practical application and skill sets that you're teaching and equipping uh, for a future and, and not that's just right. preaching something, but you're actually equipping. And that is so important. I also work with treatment centers and some of the stories that I've come across, they, they always involve some sort of trauma and wounding. And uh, so, you know, I have such a heart along with you for where there is brokenness. And this is really uh, where I believe God wants us as his followers to be supporting and, and pulling our, 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 our efforts together and praying for opportunities to find and to be a representative of Jesus, because you know what? He's been misrepresented a lot, a lot. and he is all about love first and uh, restoring dignity, restoring life. And um, so, you know, that being said, how can people find you and how can they support what you're doing, which is incredible work? Well, you know, if you have a need, maybe you're listening today and you have a son or daughter, you can just go to newlife.center. If you go to newlife.center, you're going to learn all about our men's and our women's home. Uh, we even have a program where we allow children to come in after the girls graduated. And then um, if you want to follow me at Rosalinda Rivera, that's the best place. You're going to hear about the guys and girls, and you're going to see a crazy mom on fire woman um, that shows all <laughs> my dailies. Uh, you know, I get on there and I'll do stuff on my story because I want, I want people to know, Brenda, that uh, we serve a mm. great God. And even though we've gone yes. through trials, you know, people will look at our social media and sometimes think we never go through a thing. But the reality is we do too. Yeah. We face trials, but we know mm. who our source and our God is. And so I would say new life not Amen. What a good word. And you also have a book out. You have several books out, but there's, I think your most recent book is The Seductive Slayers of Success. Is that correct? That is. Tell so, us a little about that. Yeah. Side note, I've done master coaching for years. I'm actually an operations manager for a cryptocurrency company called Philcoin out of Dubai. Um, so I oversee wow. ministries, but I also have a coaching project. So this book is, um, if you're looking to start a business, you know, maybe you have a vision, a dream, you want to be an author, it really kind of helps you. And this is from the years of counseling, know the important things that we have to do. Uh, don't keep on biting the apple, change some things in your life and reach the goals and the dreams that you want to achieve. So, okay, let's go back to uh, somebody is watching today and I know that uh, they're needing that encouragement. They're, we are living in a very narcissistic, confused culture and unfortunately so many of those mindsets like to creep in to the lives of believers and there are people out there watching today who uh, feel a little hopeless, they feel helpless and uh, maybe they even feel like they're financially not capable of getting the help that they need. 
I'd love for you to minister in the next minute or so to whoever that is that's watching. I just sense that there is a need and that you have an anointing to be able to minister to somebody today right now. Amen. Well, you know, maybe if you're listening right now and you've just felt frustrated because you don't have the finances, one, I will tell you, we have never turned away anybody because of finances. So you give us a call because that is just not how we operate. So we want to make a place available to you. Um, but I want to let you know that you need to trust in the Lord. You know, there's been times where things have seemed impossible for me as a mom, as a wife, you know, dealing with my own issues, our family watching other people in addiction and God hears your prayers. You know, a lot of times we wish it was a flesh and blood thing. We can just fight it out. But the Bible says that it's not, it's, it's a spiritual battle. And so that's going to require from you something totally different. And that's to get on your knees, to pray for that spouse or daughter and believe with faith. You see, the Bible says we have to speak to that mountain without any doubt and just know that God will make the provision and the connection to change your life. And Brenda, I don't know how much time we have, but if I could pray for somebody, you know, maybe please, going please. that, I'd love to do that. So Father, I just lift up right now every family that's been trapped by a life of addiction, God. Lord, every young yes, person, Lord. maybe the person listening today that has felt hopeless. And Lord, your word promises, God, that you are able to restore us, to renew us to reestablish us, God. And Lord, you have a yes. purpose and a plan for every listener that's here today. So God, I come against that temptation of addiction. I pray you replace it, Lord mm, God, with hope Jesus. and joy and value, Lord God, and purpose. And Father, I pray that you mm -hmm. will open the doors, that they will seek the help that they need. And you do what you always do above and beyond. Pour out your blessings and transform these lives. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us today. You are a light and such a joy and uh, it's an honor to know you and, and a joy. I, I appreciate you being, spending your time this way. Uh, thank you, Brenda. I love it. And I pray that this program blesses people that are looking for hope. Thank you so much for having me. Amen. And we'll do it again. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And friends, thank you for taking the time. It's always an honor to have you here with us. I know that everything that Rosalinda has talked about today has hit home for some of you. And I pray that these resources that have been offered are something that you will take advantage of. And I'd also like to tell you about my own book, Fight Forward, Reclaim the Real You. I want you to know that you are loved and that the lie that has been spoken over you has been broken by the cross, by the blood of Jesus Christ. He loves you, he fights for you, and he's running hard after you. So find him today if you don't know him. And we invite you to come again next time. For now, I'm Brenda Crouch. <laughs>